Hello, thanks for being with me today. My name is Lorenzo and I'm going to show you how to use Teams Metrics, that is Keymetrics Live for Microsoft Teams Voice, in order to get information about what is happening within your telephone system. I'll start with the question that is usually the most common question that we get, that is the, the big question <laughs> that everybody has, that is how do I find lost codes? Because in Teams Voice, it's not very easy to understand which calls were sent to you but were not handled correctly. So, let's start uh, to, to, to show you how you can do this using Teams metrics. First, we start with a totally blank report. I like to, so I can show you basically my line of reasoning and how do I approach this problem. The first thing that we need to know is uh, instead of running a report for like six months and 200 queues is to start small so start from a limited period uh, start from a limited data set in terms of queues or auto attendant that you want to track or people that you want to track and uh, um, make sure that you understand what is the, the data flow on uh, within uh, teams uh, telephony so in our case we're going to start from one specific queue that is this uh, cold queue support Mitchell Corporation for a specific time period that is uh, the 19th of June so the whole day of the 19th of June so we select it okay and they are working during the day so we don't care if it's a minute to midnight click apply and see what happens good news I see that the system found some calls about 90 calls and uh, so uh, this is correct, but uh, what I see is that one third of these codes are lost. So this is, a, of course, a big issue and uh, we want to delve in and try and understand what is actually happening. So I give it this report name so that we can go further and I can start keeping it before I create it all. So I call it lost codes. Okay. And then uh, we're, we're good. At the moment, we don't have anything. I'm going to create a few pages in this report. I am, as my habit, basically, I create a page for taking calls, a page for lost calls, and a page for uh, the actual uh, data blocks that I'm going to use as a, in a, as, a, as a result. So let's start from the first one. I click on settings, change the name so I understand what's in there. Taken, TC. Of course, we're interested in lost calls, but it would be, it is useful to also see which calls were taken as a comparison, basically. I create a new page for lost calls that I call lost LC, okay? And so, and uh, the third one that we're going to use later is the one about, call it report. Okay. So, taken calls and lost calls are very easy. I just click here, add data block. Go select them. In Qmetrics, all these data blocks uh, refer to the data that you have selected with the filters. So this data is all live. You can see and go back and forth until you find something that you want. In my case, I already know that I want to have taken calls. It's written on the manual, of course. So this queue details is a list of taken calls. I go here. I add a list of lost calls. That's called UD01. There we go. So at this point, I can see an, uh, all my taken calls and all my lost calls. What I'd like to be doing is uh, at this point, if I save reports, I already answered the first question that I have. That is, which calls were lost? So I can see a list of calls for each of them. I can go look what happened. So this call I entered at this specific time, it tried ringing this person, then the same person multiple times, I see, and then the, the caller gave up. This is interesting because it's, it's something that happened, but uh, in my case, I'd like to understand uh, with a bit more details what happened and why. So what do I do? I go create a report. Uh, this, oh, I was forgetting, this could be exported if I click here, I can just get a list of these 
like a PDF or an Excel file that I can download and I can decide what I want to do next. So at this point, I can at least see which calls called us. I can see the colors and I can see what happened. I can see the calls that went right. So I can see that my agents were actually in use and uh, I, for many calls, I can get information about what happened. For example, this call is a normal one. It entered, it was connected to an agent and after a few minutes it terminated. So this is uh, the first uh, general overview of what I have. But if I want to understand this in a bit more details, in terms of why, I need some recap blocks, so a way to look at this, all of this information together. So I'll start with some, a couple of data blocks that I always use, that are basically the list of what happened for taken calls. So this is a recap of what happened uh, for all taken calls and all that happened for lost calls. Okay, let's close this. So we can see, for example, some data about taken calls, so the, how many calls were handled, how long they were on average, uh, how long they waited, the minimum and maximum wait times. And uh, I can see similar information for, uh, uh, for lost calls, so how long they waited on average, minimum and maximum wait times for this connection, all this, uh, this kind of information. Then we can get some information about uh, the agent, so the person that were actually working at, the po at that moment. So I enter this. As you can see, there are a lot of data blocks that you can select. So we can understand that there were three people that were working on that queue in, the, uh, in that specific point in time. So maybe this is already, uh, you can have an idea of uh, this, is, uh, this was normal staffing or uh, there was somebody was or something was missing. And then we can get more information in terms of the SLA. So we can get information on how quickly calls were answered and how quickly calls were answered, including lost calls. So by looking at this, we can see that in order to uh, to, 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 to get to 80% of answered calls, we go to about, uh, it takes uh, uh, w about 100 seconds. So it's not, uh, it, it, this could, uh, could be done better. We also know that by looking at the, the telephone system that uh, it was possible to stay on the queue for up to three minutes. So if we tell Qmetrics uh, in the settings, we can tell the system that uh, we want to, the max monitor delay will be 100 and, the max monitor delay will be 180 seconds. Okay, save. So this way we can have the same visibility of what happened during the queue as much as long as uh, the time that the agents were, uh, were, uh, were supposed to be waiting for uh, the maximum time that, that callers could be waiting on it. The other thing that, uh, that uh, we, we want to understand is the causes for this connection and uh, how many calls were lost on the queue. So we can say you know, 03 tells us why uh, calls were disconnected and then 04 tells us uh, the queues but in this case we only have one so maybe I'll put it in because I always do but it was not terribly useful. What I see is that uh, of the calls uh, of the reasons for this connection 19, 19 calls uh, so about two-thirds were uh, because uh, the caller gave up while waiting on the queue and the other ones uh, were turned out, so the, the, they waited the, uh, the queue, um, uh, got people out because they waited uh, for the maximum al allowable time. So at this point, uh, we already have an information, general information on, uh, on what was happening. We can see that we got uh, so many calls, so we can see that we have 29 calls that were lost, 
that uh, these 29 calls were lost by a set of only three people that were working on that queue at that point. We can see the last delay in terms of how quickly agents were answering. That was, in this case, not terribly good. And we can see the reasons for, the, for uh, why people decided to give up. Uh, at this point, we, we, have, uh, we start to have an understanding of what's going on, but we can do even better because we could create a new thing where we start to have a view by time. So let's call day. Okay. And we can enter some more data blocks that are going to show you show us what happened. So if we put the H01, that is the answer code distribution by hour. So we enter the H02. Yeah, it's the wait time by hour. And then we enter the H08. That is a general overview of the day. We start to see some information that is interesting because this is the shape of all the calls that were taken uh, divided by 15 minutes. In our case, 15 minutes we have about 100 calls today, so 15 minutes maybe it's too granular. So we can go in and tell the system that we want a different granularity. So instead of being 15 minutes, we say hourly, so like 60 minutes. Of course, we can play with this depending what you want. Okay, so at this point we start to see the shape of all the calls of when calls were taken. That makes sense. A lot of calls were taken at around 9 a.m. That is the time that, that uh, the, 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 the contact center opens. Then a lot of calls up to 10, then a bit less, uh, very little between noon and 2 p.m. and then uh, between uh, 3 and 4 p.m., let's say most of the of the traffic that was actually answered but as we care about calls that were lost we can see when calls were lost and when were calls lost so it's no, no this is the answer time so we can enter the other data block i got the wrong one sorry Okay, this is the unanswered time per hour. Okay, so this is going to be more interesting. And let's see, calls were lost at 9 a.m. because they had a, a traffic, uh, a peak of uh, offered calls at 9 a.m., so they were not stuffed enough. But a lot of calls were called, were lost around noon. So this means that the people are calling at noon because uh, because they want to, because they need to, but uh, we are totally understaffed at noon, so we cannot uh, go in and find, uh, we cannot answer and we cannot serve them effectively. So as the first line of reasoning, we saw that we are able to see how many calls were lost, and we can see we have a, a good reason to look at, to understand what went on. So this report can be saved, we go back, and at this point, I can go in and reload it at any time. I can have it sent by email. I can save it uh, as a PDF, whatnot, and I can share it with my colleagues. So we were able to understand a bit about uh, why codes were lost. Thank you.